Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to paint shadows and reflections on a beach. That you don't just get the shadow of one person, you get the reflection of the water at the same time. Adding just a little bit of colour every now and again and then wetting the edges. The sky actually affects how the rest of the picture looks and then slightly more hazy as it goes over the land so watering it down a little bit more and then finally just adding a stronger top right corner just to make it more summery and taking it above the clouds a little bit the next thing while that's drying i can do is put some of the sand in which because it's very wet and in slight shadow of the cliff i'm using yellow ochre and then i'll drop other colors in on top of it so I'm just doing a very, very thin wash with the intention of coming back and making certain areas brighter or darker. This just covers the white paper. Going round, any reflections. I can add in anything else in a moment, but I've claimed most of the space and it highlights where the people are. Next, I'm going to add the middle line of rocks, which I'm making homemade grey, and I'm using that with yellow ochre I'll put the recipe in the description so it starts off quite high and it doesn't matter if there's different colors on the brush there's a little bit of blue there just drop it in and then when it's still wet I'll drop another color in and it's a very busy day there's lots of people walking on the cliffs and on the rocks so I'm not worried if I'm missing a bit just giving the general shape and it does come down to the sand but I'm starting with the top area first just to get the skyline and then it disappears between these people and I'm going to go back with a little bit of burnt sienna mixed with indigo just drop it in every now and again let it find its own way this is rag paper so it will let the paint soak in. If you're using Bockingford, you need to just perhaps use a slightly smaller brush. This is a number four because the paint will stay more on the surface. And then going back to the first colour, going down to the waterline, which is actually quite dark, but I want to start it light so that I can get all the shape and form of the rocks. But there are some rocks on the beach that I can put in. So go back to the burnt sienna and indigo mix and just put those in. And then there's some more here. There's a, just claim the space more than anything. And I've got the gap between two rocks. So what I'll do is use a flat brush and just make a bigger gap. And then I can close it up when I'm more sure of the shape of the figures. Now the headland, because it's so far away and there's a slight haze, it needs to have some of the sky colour and some of the sea colour in it. So I'll start with the homemade grey, then add a little bit of sky colour to it and a little bit of green that I've got left on my palette. And just put it in, put a line in and then add a little bit more blue towards the skyline. It will need a second coat to get the exact subtleties but I've separated it from the nearer cliffs. Now while I'm waiting for that to dry I can't do anything so I can start looking at how many people I've got and where I want to highlight them. So to start with I'm going to mix Naples yellow with a little bit Brazilian crimson just to give a little bit of a tan colour and just put in what I can see. I can see the man's top quite clearly but not everybody's that clear. There's another man beside him, it's a little bit more vague and the same with the ladies, a little bit more vague. I'm not worried about doing their legs yet, I'm just trying to claim the main body of the people and I can put in 
the big ring that somebody's got. So I'm going to mix French ultramarine and a little bit of grey just to make a different colour. Put that in and that's quite useful because once I've got that in I can mark other things off against it. It's always good to have a point of reference. I'm just using a flat brush to move some of the pigment around on the paper to show that there's little rivulets of water coming up. It's quite a pattern on the beach and it just go very gently and you can see that it gives a different tone. I'm now going to drop some warmer water in which I'm using cobalt turquoise and a little bit of chrome yellow just to make very greeny water where it's coming in under the waves. It's picking up sand so it's becoming quite turquoisey. By making it green, make the white surf show up a little bit more. And then go further out into slightly deeper water, it's more turquoise. So I'm just adding a little bit, leaving room for people. And then the furthest water is actually more French ultramarine, just different light. So I'm going to start short of the horizon and then go back to it. Make it as neat a line as I can because it's got good visual impact because it's such a sudden colour change. And then coming back to the white surf, and I'm just going to drop some stronger paint in and it'll find its way in there but make it look even bolder. What I can do is put some different green in, so I'm going to mix Naples yellow this time. Where there's different depths of water and it's in its own shade, the colours change a little bit. Just going to put a tiny bit more blue in there. It's sort of halfway between the two colours I've already got down. And then as it goes to the right, the light's different, it's not in shadow from the rock and it gets brighter again. Put that in and then go in with a little bit of Viridian on top just to make it much brighter. And then there's peaks and troughs of the wave. It's got a sort of flat plateau here and then another rolling bit, but I've got to let it dry before I can put that in. Whilst I'm waiting for the waves to dry, I'm going to go back to the rocks and put in a very dark brown where it meets the green water. Just take them round the people. A few different lengths of rock and different shapes. It's all fairly random, but every piece has got a dark edge. If I want to put highlights in, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of yellow and that will push the rock back look like a highlight where the sun's touching it and then a narrower line towards the corner so I'm just holding the brush at a different angle and going back in with some slightly lighter colour just to take it up a little bit away from the water level so by taking it up gradually at the top I'm not going to end up with a solid line now I'll go back to the people. I've got somebody in a wetsuit, so they'd be a good reference point for other things. So I'm using Payne's Grey. Any dark colour that you've got will do. But it gives a good contrast to the sand to have somebody in a very dark colour. So it's a shorty wetsuit. I'll just put the bottoms in. Um, just make the legs a slightly different angle so that we can see that they are legs around the top and then it's got half sleeves 
And so I'm going to map them off against the ring. And then I've got somebody in red. That's always a good colour for a beach, but they've got a white pattern on. So I'm just going to start from the waistband and to take the brush for a dance. Just leave a hint of white showing. And put some cross strokes on so that they look patterned without doing any effort. On the right hand side of the giant ring is very dark so I can just suggest that and there's also a shadow within it so I'll put that in at the top but not the bottom it's catching some sunlight at the bottom now the next stage is to put a tiny bit more on the far headland which has to be bluey green in the sort of the summer heat haze but I want to make it a bit darker so I'm going to separate it from the rocks by using Payne's grey and then drop in some yellow in which will make the green with the colours I've got and then I'll add blue I'm just going to do it in three goes of colours it definitely needs blue so it looks further away, but it's, you can see that it's a rugged hillside. Nicely separated from the warm colours in front. And I can go over those again now, just using the burnt sienna. A tiny bit of indigo just to dull it down a little bit. You can see that one lot of rocks are very close and the other a long way away. And I'll just add some blue on top of that. And a little bit more blue like mixing grey on the page back with the burnt sienna just make nice random areas just try and make random areas and it'll just be a nice background to put the people against so I can move back to the right now and put a little bit more green on and then to just separate the high and low waves. And there's a little bit more in front of that. And then a warmer, softer green for the flatter area that's catching the sun. And further forward is lighter again. So just use more water and move the pigment. It's worth doing it in little areas to make sure that it all harmonises and that you've got room for the white surf. What I can do is by the rock is add a warm green. So there's no surf there, it's just gone into a little gully looks quite happy I'm just going to add a tiny bit more turquoise to that just to warm it up a little bit now that I've got a few more colours in I'm going to return to the people and stick a little bit more in it it's a question of building it up gradually to make a sincere picture so I'm going to just go in with some Naples yellow and a zillion crimson. Just make a warm colour and put in a few suntan shoulders. Just a little bit more Naples yellow. And the people are not the same shade all the way across. They do vary. This man's quite darker at the bottom where he's in a little bit of shade. So I'm going to put some burnt sienna in at the bottom and then wet into wet, just take it up to the top. So when it's dry, it looked like the sun's hitting his shoulders. And the same with his legs, which haven't got, that was a second coat of paint on the top. This is a first coat of paint. So I'll just put a suggestion of legs. 
could use the side of a dry brush and just take a little bit off his shoulders. Now I'm going to move across now to the lady holding the giant ring who's wearing dark blue shorts which is good. It's always good to get a few more colours in. I'll put the shorts in. I can't put a top in otherwise it'll all merge. So what I can do is put the top of the child next to her in. It's a very small area. So I'm just going to move the paint rather than add more paint. And it's a child on the move so there aren't really any straight edges. A lady in a black bikini. I haven't got black. I've got Payne's grey. Any dark colour will be fine. So make a slight triangle for the bikini and then a strap across and some straps up and dab the brush off and I could just move those to suggest them going under her arms. Now that I'm going to start with some other people now I've got this young man in a wetsuit and then he's got a friend in front of him with really long shorts. Fashions do change each summer on the beach and I'm making them a subdued blue because I want your eye to be taken to the water and certain countries have codes for what you can wear in the swimming pool or the beach and then there's another young man with long shorts if you just try and keep all the shapes simple it will look fine and then got a young lady in a purple costume which i'm just to make a difference from the other colors that are already on the page going to use cobalt violet bring the straps down bring the costume down a little tiny bee at the bottom I can move my way out to some of the people in the water who all seem to be wearing very dark colours. It might be shorty wetsuits. Somebody surfing there, trying to. So they've got a very peculiar shape. Their arms out balancing them. Now moving on to the reflections in the sand. So I'm just making them a bit bolder by adding a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm starting with this man. And the reflections can be a bit longer, but they're going sideways. And it's easy to measure them against because they come up to this chap's feet. And then there's one leg showing more than the other and a hand showing. And then the rest is lost in shadow, so I'm going to make it a darker brown. And then moving on to almost black, so it'd be the Payne's grey mixed with the brown. And a fairly dry brush. And just put the lines in going one way, then the other way, just through the puddle. And even the big ring has got a reflection. So if he wasn't that obvious before, he is now by his reflection. And there's an area of blue around that. So I'm just cleaning the brush off really well. Getting pale blue on the brush. Just suggesting a little bit of standing water. And then in front of him there's a tiny puddle again. Taking it out sideways. And over to his right. So that's reinforced his shape. And I'll do exactly the same with the other people. I've just done the same with the man in the red trunks. And just gone sideways strokes to show his reflection. And the lady in the black bikini. And then to show that it's him. And that the fact that there is a colour change. I was just going to drop a little bit of red in. And then move it around. It is stronger in certain places than others. So I just pick it up. And move it and then it's a complex area because not only have you got the reflections but you've also got a shadow being cast down from the rock so I'm going to mix French Ultramarine and Payne's Grey together 
make a different colour for a shadow. And the man has got the shadow, I'm just drawing the brush off a bit, so I can be more exact. He's got the shadow coming all the way to the right. And so have these two. And hers is a bit longer. So we've got double shadows and the same with the people and the big ring. Just make that a bit stronger. And that's a bit of a confused shadow because there's a lot of activity. And the young man here has got a little bit of a shadow, not too much because the rocks. And so is the young man in the green shorts. So the pattern is building up. Now the light is different nearer the front. It's much paler. So the young girls here have got more of a grey shadow than a dark one. To make the people stand out a bit more, I'm adding a little bit of warm blue water. So I'm adding turquoise to the French ultramarine and just putting a different colour around their bodies. And that will make some of these marks I've put in more subdued. And then it goes almost to grey as it goes further down the beach. So I'll add a little bit of Naples yellow to it just to subdue it slightly. And then use water just to make it slightly pale. And mix the colours together as though they're going down the surf line. Move some paint from one place to another if it looks a bit strong. And it's getting more and more pale as it goes towards the rocks. It's got different lighting conditions. But by adding the blue, the red's standing out more. And then I'll just take it back a little bit further to an area around the surf. Just leave every other line for the surf. And the white also affects the colour values. So I'm going to the edge of the picture now. And then past the people, leaving a little bit of paper for the surf. And then to finish it off, I can now add the man's head, which I don't want to be the same colour as the rocks. So I'm going to add a little bit of Indian red or if you've got Venetian red, if you haven't, just add a little bit of ordinary red to the brown and it will give a different shade. So it brings him closer than the rocks that are behind him. And then the man with the red trunks can have slightly darker hair because the rocks are lighter where he is and his head out there we use a dry brush and just move the paint slightly and the late this lady's got a ponytail so I want to separate the color of her hair from her costume so again I'm just using a dry brush just moving the paint slightly the figures on the rock are in slight silhouette so I'm using the same principle of separating the colors so I'm just going to do a long streak and then pull it down and I'll put some colours on it in a moment and the same with the person also on the rocks, a long streak and then change it to a more detailed position. Now the young man with the wetsuit can add a little bit of orange to his hair just to give a lift. And his hair's quite slick down. He's obviously been in the water. So I'll just go back and do the heads. If people are moving when you're doing this, you can mix and match. You can do the top of one person and the bottom of another. Now I can move back to the rocks on the beach and make them a tiny bit darker. Add a little contour. 
and the same with this rock here that it's got quite a curled edge and I'll just use the dark paint I've used for the heads and the shadows and just put in a curled edge and then add a little bit of yellow ochre on the other side just to give it a top that's catching the sun that doesn't clash with the beach and then there's lots of swirling water so I'm going to mix up a little bit of a homemade grey with a hint of blue and there's lots of swirling water here it's sort of a lower part of the beach so I'm just going to do some gentle swirls and that will change the balance of the reflections from the big inflatable and then there so the waves just gone out they're much finer further in and then go back with darker reflections got the inside of the ring and the dark hair and then a shorter area and then the lighter side of the ring is giving a slightly different colour so that's giving several reflections that are slightly lost because they're going through the water but you can still see that they match the people now i can go back now and put the lady's top in which was very pale blue which is good because it separates it from the sea which is green behind her just try and make her shoulders slightly more defined and i'll just carry on like that throughout the beach little bits and it'll build it up to a nice picture there's lots of blue on the front that i can add so i'm just going for a slightly bigger brush i'm just getting up some very thin french ultramarine i'm just going in just leaving little lines i left the paper the sand color lighter earlier to allow for that And that shows that the wet sand and water is from the previous wave is still on the move just needs a little bit to suggest it and very very pale but we can easily see now that they're all standing in an area that is not dry and keep coming with the colors making little patterns as they swirl And then finally, some slightly bolder marks going over the reflections that have now dried, just losing them slightly, but not losing the shadow. Having mapped out the people, I'm now just putting a little bit more warmth on them. The shadows on the legs that will make a difference. So I'm just going to add a little bit of raw umber and show you what I mean. Just put tiny shadow in doesn't have to be black it's just a change in tone and it'll because it's already wet it'll just merge gently so now moving over to the crowd on the left so these people have got more clothes on so just going to use some different colors i've got some prussian blue which will make a change from the other colours on the beach and I've got people in navy blue and I've got to map out the people so I'll start with somebody who's tall he's slightly hidden behind other people this is where you have to mix and match because you can't be definite when people are on the move and you've just done quick sketches so I'm going to put a little girl in with a yellow hat purely because I haven't got yellow anywhere else I'll just put a thin coat on to get the shape of the hat. A lovely sun hat. So I'll let the yellow sun hat dry for a minute and I've found some dark shorts on somebody else. Which I'll just put in. And then I've got the parent behind the child who's coming along. She's wearing dark shorts as well. So I'm just going to put in a dark rectangle 
nothing complicated and then there's a tiny bit underneath the child's arm so I'm just going to leave a little gap and then she's got navy blue top on so I'm just going to add some Prussian blue to that just to give a different change of, of colour no reason for it except that I've used lots of other colours already put a shoulder in and when people are coming along the beach they're not always a standard shape you do get people bending and stretching so you just have to look for something to reference it against so I'm going to bring the shorts up higher now if in doubt you just start low and then bring them up so we'll put her face in And then come back to it all when it's dried a little. And there's somebody looking into a fishing net. Which is a good thing to put in. Because it adds variety to all the things. So we've got him looking down into a net. So I'm just going to put a shape in. And then warm the paint up a little bit. And do a crisscross. Now to make it authentic, we need to put his head in. We've got people looking in all directions. I can't do his hair until he's dry. What I can do is put the tall man in who hasn't got a shirt on, but I think because I want to separate him from the others, we're going to give him a shirt. So we're going to give him a light blue shirt. So I'm just going to reduce the strength of the colours I've already got there. And starting from his shoulders, go down. And we can put his head in. And we can put the lady's head in who's wearing a hat. And the little boy looking into the fishing net. Now I've got more people in the distance. So I said against a rock, I need them to be in pale colours. So I'm going to add some cobalt violet. And some orange. And all summer colours. People with towels and all sorts. So that's filled up a bit of the space now I need to put water around them so to do that I need to work out where the water is so I want a very yellowy grey greeny water coming in and it needs a chance to dry it's filled up the rest of the beach nicely and I've just got to do the rocks under the boy that's holding the net I'm mixing all my colors together to get a dark rock and that separates the people from each other there's a lot more reflections and things to put in but that's given one cluster of people and another cluster the third cluster out on the waves and I've just put in a few reflections of the people and then I've got a boy that looks like he's floating here because he's actually in the shadow of one of the people further to the left so what I've got to do is get the very tall man put his shadow in and take it past the boy put a few edges on it He's now no longer floating, he's anchored. And I can go back with some warmer colours. And now claim a few more arms and legs. You don't do it all at once, you do it gently. And then the brown lines will indicate where people are. Whether they're going forwards or backwards or whether they're stationary. And I've got a very clear reflection here. This young man, 
Bring his arm out. Both arms out. And that fills up this part of the page. I need some blue to finish that off because there's lots of water just swirling around. So while they're drying, I'll go back to the rocks with some brown mixed with a little bit of indigo, just to darken it slightly. I'll just put in a few more features of the rock. Dab the brush off so there's not so much paint on it. And then a different colour, just slightly. And drop it in in between. Just makes you look into the middle ground if there's a warm area. And I can readjust any tones if I need to when it's dried. It's now making the picture all look nearer and that further away. And the bit that's further away needs a silhouette, so I need some dark colour. I'm using Payne's Grey, but whatever dark colour you've got. Just go along the top. lose any white paper but it will be catching the light so it will be in slight silhouette and the rock where it touches the water is in shadow so that's equally dark whilst the rock's drying i'm going back to the surf line which hasn't got a white top everywhere it's got a partial white top so filling in the differences Pictures do develop, you can't put it all in one brush stroke. And then bring up some of the tones to match nearer the shore. Just bring them in a little bit brighter. Water the paint down so it's not so strong. I'll just go in the next little line. As these are cooler colours, it's making the people look warmer. On the edge here, I've got definite stripes. I've got three white and two blue. So I'll put those in. It just changes the way you look at the picture and where you look because the emphasis is taken to different areas. And I need some quite strong paint here to show the white surf. And here it's a little bit mixed because there's waves crashing into each other. I've just highlighted a few little areas where they're dry. Just put a bit more water standing on the sand and a few more nooks and crannies of the figures but it is a crowd scene and you don't want to show everybody and there was quite a lot of people that were very adventurous climbing up the rocks and you can see stepper point at padstow in the background well, i hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and you'll try painting figures yourself soon thank you for watching